Welcome to Tech Primers. In this video, we are going to see what is event driven programming or the event driven architecture and how is it different from the reactive programming which we saw some time back. So in few uh, like maybe few months ago or few weeks ago, I had created uh, videos on uh, what is reactive programming and then I had created an example of uh, reactive programming using uh, vertex and also I had created um, uh, examples using the uh, reactive core or the Java Java RX which uh, Netflix has created right so in this particular video we are going to see what is event driven programming and uh, how is it different from the reactive programming right so event driven programming is nothing but so if you see here the website I have right now is the Martin Fowler's uh, website so he has um, uh, created a blog post on what he learned about what is event driven programming and stuff like that so I'll just uh, try to summarize what he has done or what he has told right so event driven programming is where uh, your uh, actions are taken based on the events right so for example if there is an event saying okay uh, new message has arrived so based on that particular event our uh, actions will be triggered so if there is a message which has got arrived you have to do process that message so once you process that message you can raise another event saying processed okay so based on the process there will be another microservice uh, which will be listening to these events and then it can be triggered so basically there will be a message bus uh, so using the message bus uh, all the microservices can interact and based on the events they can be triggered okay so there could be like tens or hundreds of microservices listening to the same message bus or the event bus um, there will be even notifications generated on these uh, buses okay all these uh, uh, microservices will be listening to the events based on the events the actions will be performed by their corresponding microservices uh, by this way uh, even uh, you don't have to worry about the server side crash or the client side crash so if you see the microservices architecture right uh, when we saw microservices architecture you had to be uh, careful while uh, handling resiliency and scalability right you have to be very careful while handling resiliency so when you do a rest endpoint call from one microservice to another you have to make sure that particular microservice is up if that particular microservice is not up you have to add some uh, retry mechanism or you have to add a circuit breaker mechanism to retry it later or uh, cut that particular circuit right you don't have to do that in event driven programming because ev event driven programming is all based on events so the source microservice doesn't have to know that okay the destination microservice uh, will be consumed or not okay the source is going to just create a notification and saying okay see my job is done I don't care whether it is processed or not I'm done so the other side the uh, consum consumer uh, microservices that will be like if it is up it is going to consume that event if it is down it's not going to consume that mess particular message so um, and there is there is no uh, uh, what do you call interdependency or uh, just because the consumer is down the producer doesn't have to fail okay it just publishes these messages to the event bus or uh, any message bus system and then the consumer will consume these messages whenever they are back okay so that is the major uh, difference between the normal traditional microservice rest uh, calls versus this event driven programming okay so event driven architectures are basically um, uh, architectures which are designed uh, with events right so you will generate events and based on the event you will be processing the uh, flow so uh, individuals my individual microservices responsibility will be listening to the event if the event doesn't make any sense it will not do anything if the event makes sense then it will process something and then it will publish another event or it will just uh, process the data or it will generate whatever it needs to do okay so that is the event driven architecture okay there are uh, lots of frameworks which are uh, created um, based on these event driven architecture so if you see recently spring has created something called spring cloud stream okay I, I haven't used a spring cloud stream but um, I see that okay spring has created uh, a framework already so it is called spring cloud stream so maybe we can try the spring cloud stream in in a while uh, but it uses uh, Apache Kafka to uh, stream the messages so what happens is all these messages will be published to the Kafka so the producer will publish to the Kafka and the consumer will consume from the Kafka queues okay so that is the spring cloud stream so same way uh, for the reactive uh, programming uh, vertex is there so how is it different as i said earlier reactive programming is um, uh, where you will be you will not be processing messages or events you will be processing the data okay so in terms of event driven programming everything is based on events okay so all the uh, handlings or the 
uh, implementation will be based on the events but in the reactive programming in for example in frameworks like vertex everything is based on the data okay the major difference in the event driven programming and the uh, reactive programming is data so rea in reactive programming you will be taking action based on the data okay so you uh, for example in in the reactive programming you trigger something and then you get an acknowledgement and you, you expect that some data is going to come back but in terms of event driven programming it's not the case in event driven programming you will just trigger something and then you don't uh, know who will be processing it and then this guy will not even care whether that is processed or not okay so the, the source microservice won't even care whether the destination has processed that message or not so that is like an event driven programming in reactive programming it is a subset of event driven programming but uh, it it will be processing the data so the major uh, concept of the reactive programming is the data okay that is a major difference between these two and if you are not aware what ab about vertex vertex is the framework created by vmware and then it is now moved into eclipse so the founder has moved uh, the project to eclipse now so it is under eclipse so i have made a video on that as well you can check that also so vertex also has uh, lots of uh, libraries and api similar to spring and all these are reactive based so all the uh, libraries inside vertex are all reactive based if you see here they have uh, all these libraries for the java javascript groovy ruby kotlin scala uh, etc so for all these languages they have the library and then you can use them okay if you see here there are tons of libraries so you can just scroll keep on scrolling so there are tons of libraries uh, just uh, play around with vertex uh, it is pretty good actually if you are uh, interested in reactive programming you can uh, take a look at uh, the libraries which are there inside vertex so you can create microservices with vertex as well so apart from spring so you would have seen me creating spring uh, uh, spring uh, discovery servers or the circuit breakers whatever right so you can do similar stuff inside vertex using reactive programming okay i haven't started reactive uh, programming videos uh, spring has created something called uh, spring uh, web flux which is uh, a reactive programming stream parallel to the spring mvz and the spring cloud uh, um, stream so spring has also created that it is uh, it is right now in the release candidate phase so they haven't launched it yet uh, so i think by the end of the year it will be launched but uh, still they have it in the release candidate we can try that out uh, maybe in a, in a in some weeks i will just create some videos on spring 5 uh, which is coming up with spring boot 2.0 which has this reactive programming support okay so uh, that th that's it but uh, that's it i wanted to discuss uh, the event driven programming with the reactive programming and how how are they different uh, that's it for this particular video um, if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe meet you again in the next video thank you very much